Good morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Meditations. We're glad that you're with us. We've been looking at snapshots of the Lord Jesus Christ, snapshots of the perfect servant. And uh, we're going through the Gospel of Mark right now. And uh, as we're looking at these snapshots of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are at, in chapter 2, verse 13, we're going to be looking at verses 13 to, f to 17 this morning, and we're looking at the snapshot of the perfect servant of God. This, and here, specifically, we're looking at the snapshot of the, sin, uh, of the friend of sinners, the snapshot of the friend of sinners, or we could call it a snapshot of the grace of God. And how wonderful to see the, the grace of God that, that oozes out of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, we're reminded that they say that, that uh, they marveled at the gracious words in which he spoke. In Psalm 45, it says, grace was poured upon his lips. And the Lord Jesus not only spoke grace, but he demonstrated grace. And one of the things that we see here in this very, these very verses is that he was a seeking Savior. He was a seeking Savior. That grace, the grace that came to seek and to save that which was lost, we see that in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice in verse 13, Then when he went out again by the sea, all the multitudes came to him and he taught them. You know, when we think of this expression that they came to him, we have it back up in chapter 1, verse 45. At the very end of that verse, it says, and they came to him from every direction. We have it again in verse 3 of chapter 2. Then they came to him bringing the paralytic who was carried by the four. And, and we have it again uh, in verse 15 of our chapter where it says they followed him. And then in, in verse 7 of chapter 3, they followed him. And then verse 13 of chapter 3, they came to him. And then in verse 32 of chapter 3, they, they were sitting around him. And then in verse chapter uh, 4 verse 1 it says they, that they gathered to him so you see the Lord Jesus was always the center that they were those that were magnetized toward him they came to the Lord Jesus Christ and I say dear friend they were never disappointed the Lord Jesus healed so many that came to him and those who came to him had their lives changed and I would just suggest that today that if you've not come to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would do so today. So when the Lord Jesus was teaching those that came to him, and as he passed by, he was out by the sea, and as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office. And he spoke to, uh, to, to Levi, also known as Matthew, but he spoke to him and he said to him, follow me. But let me just pause for a minute and explain a little something about this uh, profession of tax collectors in that day. It's important for us to note that, that tax collectors were, were Jewish tax collectors who had joined themselves to Rome. And they attached themselves to Rome. They were collecting taxes from Rome, except they would they would collect taxes more than what was required, and then they would take the remainder. They would give Rome what they were due, but then they would take more than what was due, and they would take it for themselves, and they would become rich. And there's several tax collectors mentioned in Scripture, in the Gospels. But Matthew was a tax collector. And the tax collectors in that day were sort of weighed down low at the bottom. They were kind of the, the Gregs of society. No one, no one liked the tax collector because they were, they were those that would take um, too much. They would, they would take for themselves. Basically, they were stealing. And, uh, and we find here that the Lord Jesus came 
to Levi, the Matthew, and he came to him and he called him. And it's no matter where we are on that scale, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says we all need the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we, in our society today, we like to think, well, I'm not as bad as that person. But the truth of it is that one sin, it doesn't matter what the sin was, one sin would keep you out of heaven. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ died for that sin. He died for you. He came and he was seeking to save that which was lost. And the Bible says all we like sheep had gone astray. Every one of us were lost. And so the Lord Jesus came to seek and to save. And as he's walking by the sea and he's walking by that tax uh, booth, he sees Levi and he calls Levi and he was a seeking savior. But what about Levi's part? Levi is a surrendered sinner. This isn't a manner of Levi just, well, I'm going to get a little bit more committed to religious things. No, Levi isn't about being committed. Levi is about being surrendered. We find that he leaves his tax booth. He leaves the table. He gets up and he follows the Lord Jesus Christ and he leaves it all. He makes a clean break. And you know, that's, that's an interesting thing because Levi is one of the only disciples that never went back to his profession. Many of the other disciples who were fishermen, at one point, they would go back to their profession. But Levi never went back to his profession, as far as we know from Scripture. He makes a clean break. He made a complete U-turn, a complete turn of repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would suggest, dear friend, that you today, this is exactly what you need to do. You need to make that clear U-turn back to God to agree with God's word that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and come back to God. Notice it says that the Lord Jesus spoke to Levi and said, follow me. And he arose and followed him. In fact, in Luke's gospel, I believe it's in chapter Chapter 8, uh, it says there that he left all. He left it all. And you know what a wonderful thing for us to leave it all and, and to be able to say, all to Jesus I surrender. You know, that's exactly what we find with Levi. He could, he could say, as the little Sunday school hymn says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And so we see with that in verse 15, now it happened that as he uh, was dining in Levi's house, the Lord Jesus went and Levi shows evidence of a changed life. The first thing Levi does is he goes and he brings his fellow tax collectors, his fellow sinners, and he brings them in to have a feast for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has this testimony of what Jesus has done in his life and who Jesus is. And he wants his friends to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And we find this here. It says, it happened that as he was dining in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. And there were many and they followed him. Again, we find that Levi has this testimony, invites his friends to come meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, there's no greater invitation than to tell your friends what Jesus has done for you, to be able to reach out to those that you know, to those that you rub shoulders with, to those you work with, to those that you go to school with, to those that you are on the job with, and to be able to tell them who Jesus is and what he has done in your life. But not all are going to accept that. Notice in verse 16, And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats with and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? There are going to be those that call into question. Uh, there are going to be those that have doubts. There is going to be those that want to criticize. 
Uh, and what, what we find is that these tax collectors and these, um, these sinners came to the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, the scholars, the, the scribes, the, the Bible students of the day, we find that they were so busy crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's that they didn't see the hearts of people that were lost and needful. And what we find here is that they came to the disciples. You know, earlier in chapter 2, verse 6, it says that they reasoned within their own heart against the Lord Jesus Christ, and he knew that. But here it says that they came to the disciples. And then when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What an important verse for us today to, to, to hear. The Lord Jesus did not come. He did not come to call the righteous. Why? Because I, I tell you, there is none righteous. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that's why the Lord Jesus came. He came to give eternal life. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And dear friend, today, this is why the Lord Jesus Christ came. And yes, this snapshot of the Lord Jesus is that he is the friend of sinners. He is the one who reaches out to you today and he says to you, come unto me all of you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not uh, repented of your sin, I invite you today to come to the Lord Jesus. To know him is to know life eternal. May the Lord bless you. May he encourage you today as we look at this snapshot of the servant of God.